So today let's make a quick unedited video. I haven't made any for a very long time. Let's make it about this device, this DIY device. It's basically a simple intercom, a device where you press the button and talk into it and somebody can hear you on the other side of the cable and if he presses the button you can hear him from this speaker. And the speaker works as a microphone as well and the same applies to the other side of it. It's a very simple two transistor circuit I have, I have put into this floppy disk box. Here's the speaker which also works as a microphone and there is just some completely botched board. Just a chipped off corner of some circuit board and I dremeled some squares or stripes into it and put some components on it and there is a relay and the switch. And of course the reason for the for the relay is just because I didn't have I didn't have a double throw double pole switch. So I used a single pole, single throw switch and a relay. But you can basically get rid of the relay and just use a button with double throw, double pole contacts. And of course the phone is probably not going to focus, but it's probably better because this is just a horrible mess. Maybe now you can see something. Just a couple transistors, resistors, capacitors. And that's it. I have built it almost 20 years ago and I added this indication LED which is not necessary. And it's powered using this power supply. It's a classic iron transformer with a rectifier and a capacitor on a cable. But I plan to convert it for batteries. Probably something like this. This supplies about 9 volts I guess. I plan to convert it to batteries because this constantly draws power in standby. And the power consumption is very low. In standby it draws probably just a couple microamps and it's going to discharge these batteries in about 20-30 years. So it's actually more economical to power it using batteries than this because this draws in standby about 1 watt. The standby consumption of this one is absolutely negligible. As the, the, the iron transformer actually draws power all the time. And of course everybody's asking for the schematic. It's on my website and here is basically the power supply or battery, some capacitor which is probably not even necessary. Here is the button and the relay coil and the contacts. And it can all be replaced by just a button with enough contacts in it. And then it's just a two transistor audio amplifier, nothing special. The only special thing about it is that it can actually go into standby and draw very chill no current. And the circuit is actually non-symmetrical. Just one side of it has the power supply and the amplifier and the other side of it on the other side of the cable with two wires has just the speaker which again doubles as a microphone a capacitor and this normally closed switch. And the reason for this is that when this normally closed switch is on, it bypasses this capacitor, so there can't be a DC bias on the cable and this basically removes the bias from the base of the first transistor, so this one turns off. And when it's off, it also removes the bias from this transistor and this one is also off. So it's basically an audio amplifier, but the DC coupled. And basically by shorting the base of the first transistor to zero volts, both transistors turn off and they have no bias and it virtually, it draws virtually no current. The only thing that passes current then is this one mega ohm resistor, but one mega ohm at 9 volts is going to pass, what, 9 microamps. So this can run on a 9 volt battery in standby for a couple years and for... On a double A, yes, it could run in standby probably for like two decades. And when somebody wants to talk from this side, he presses the button, which goes open a circuit because it's a normally closed button. And then it's not shorted, and of course the, the resistance of the speaker coil is very low, so it's basically almost a short circuit 
for the small current going through this one mega ohm resistor. So if the speaker coil is connected to the base and the emitter, it basically shorts it. But when you press this button, now the speaker is connected via a capacitor, which allows a DC bias for the base of the transistor. And then you can speak into the speaker and it amplifies and you can hear it from the other speaker, which is connected via the relay to the output of the amplifier. And when you want to talk from this side, you press this button, these two switches flip, and then basically this speaker is a microphone, which goes via a capacitor into the base of this transistor, and it amplifies it, and then it goes into the speaker on the other side. And in this condition, this switch is on, so it goes straight into the speaker without the capacitor. The capacitor is bypassed. So this circuit is quite simple but quite clever because you can talk both ways and it can go into standby, drawing virtually no current. The cable has just two wires, it doesn't need more than two. And just one of just one side of the system requires electronics in it, an amplifier and a power supply. The other the other side of it has virtually nothing. Just the speaker, the capacitor and the button. And just out of curiosity, let's measure the standby power consumption using my DIY wattmeter. When I plug it in, it draws about 0 0.8 watts. Let's plug it into the 10 times more sensitive socket and 0 0.86 watts standby consumption. And of course, it's all just this transformer. This is absolutely negligible compared to the standby consumption of the transformer in this. It was running on this power supply for many, many years, but in a way, decided to convert it to batteries, which is actually more economical. Running the small iron transformer all the time doesn't make any sense. And no, I don't even have to run a wire to the other side of the house because I'm going to repurpose old wiring which was for internet connections for these Ethernet cables. In the house there are these internet connection Ethernet sockets connecting various rooms and they are long disused. These are very long derelict, so I can reuse this wiring for this intercom. And of course these things have eight wires. I'm just going to use two, one pair. I'm just going to use the blue pair. And as far as, far as I remember, the internet connections were always using just the green and orange pair and the brown and blue pair was almost always unused. And these things are from the early 2000s era where internet connection wasn't actually going through Wi-Fi. It was going through cables and of course the camera won't focus. And here is some sort of router which I was using to bring internet connections to various computers and instead of Wi-Fi it was using for outputs for these cables and it went through wiring in walls to various rooms in the house and as you can see I replaced a lot of electrolytic capacitors in this thing using tantalum capacitors because of course it was it had a cover of course I then removed the cover because it was overheating the processor and other chips were getting bloody hot and of course in a couple of years the electrolytic capacitors failed in it and then I replaced them with the tantalum ones and it worked basically until this was useless because there was Wi-Fi and these never failed, these tantalum capacitors. And of course I operated it without the cover to keep it cooler. And of course it and of course if there was too many computers, it has just four connections, and if there was too many computers to be connected. You could basically switch some using this. It's basically just a switch in a box switching the cables physically. If there were two computers in one room with just 
one such cable going to it, you have to choose basically and only one computer would have an internet connection. And of course there was no such thing as internet in smartphones. Well, there was no such thing as smartphones, which the youngest viewers probably can't even imagine. Imagine sticking this into your phone. But of course I digress. Well, and, and the active power consumption, 1.5 watts, 0.9. So let's connect this to the end of the cable to plug it into the socket and let's replace this with the battery holder. Of course it's not going to fit probably, but there is this piece of plastic which is not necessary here. You will chop it off and then it will fit. Let's do it single-handed, just for your entertainment. Well, I should have probably grabbed my angle grinder for this. That's it. Now it should fit. Almost. Well, it does fit. It fits nicely. Nice. And so that's it. And of course LEDs were not always super bright and there was no such thing as blue LEDs back then. I miss this era. And of course yes, today's kids are probably going to use their smartphones to talk to somebody in the other room of the same building, the same house or apartment, but I still like this thing. It still feels completely crazy to me to be using something so complex as a smartphone connected to some sort of global black box internet system to talk to somebody in the other room of your apartment. It's crazy how all people are using such a complex technology, yet they have no idea what a resistor or transistor is. It's kind of unsettling to see how people rely on technology they have absolutely no idea how does it work and they could never create it themselves. They couldn't even fix it themselves. They take it for granted and they still complain about how crappy it is. That's funny. Is there anybody else finding it so unsettling that we rely on technology that's so complex virtually nobody can understand it and basically it's created or invented by like one in a million rare individuals, which are super intelligent, because basically most people are completely dumb, let's face it. All the technology we are using is made by very rare intelligent people, which are like one in a million rare, and all the other people are just using it without having any idea how does it work. And they can actually operate it just because it's designed to be operated by monkeys. And the technology is not even produced in your country, not even on your continent. And such a complex technology can only be produced at a very large scale. Just a couple factories producing it for the entire world, basically. As the technology is getting more and more complex, it's more, more and more likely that if the factories get destroyed by anything, we are not even able to rebuild them or not fast enough. And it's unsettling because the technology is no longer just for our comfort. Our lives depend on it, basically. Nowadays, Something like a hospital or, or pharmacy cannot run without internet connection, without electricity, without all the infrastructure, some server, data center and all the production of all the vital things like medications or even food and also the supermarkets can't work without the internet and very complex information systems. The technology is getting more and more and more complex and farther and farther from people's understanding and produced farther and farther from their homes. Without all the technologies, a city is basically a big mass of people with nothing to produce their food. And with no skills, no know-how, no equipment to do so, deteriorated after many generations of no natural selection and nothing forcing them to stay healthy. And as the technologies get more and more complex, I feel they, they are getting more and more fragile. 
and it's actually more likely that they will just stop working at some point and we will completely lose the technologies and the infrastructure. Everything's so interconnected and interdependent that a failure would have a cascading effect of everything basically failing at once at the same time. That's why I like simple things. I like building things myself and building something that I can understand and other people can understand. Build themselves and fix themselves. I like it even if I do it just for my good feeling. But of course I hope technologies will stay there and I really don't want any sort of catastrophe to happen or anything. But it still feels better not to increase your dependence on technologies more than necessary. So I recommend you not to rely on technologies way too much and, and also keep your brain working. Don't replace your brain with Google or other technologies. And also stay healthy. Nowadays you can get away with being quite unhealthy, but we are actually living in a very strange environment. This environment is basically a rare anomaly where people can get away and survive being unhealthy. This is really just a rare anomaly. So keep your mental and physical health. Maybe technologies can't replace it. Or maybe for now, but it might change. Don't rely entirely on something that you can't understand. But let's go back to this thing. I decided to delete the relay. It's some sort of Soviet relay and the coil actually starts to operate. It actually clicks on at about 10 volts, which is not very convenient for a 9 volt battery. I was running it originally on a 12 volt power supply. This is a Soviet relay from 88. And I'm replacing it with a switch like this. Double pole, double throw, or actually four poles and double throw. But I'm doubling up all the contacts for more reliability. This is an old switch made in Poland from my box of old switches made in Poland. Probably a long time ago. So I'm going to use a switch, which I should have probably done already 20 years ago to begin with, but this switch is much harder to mount on the panel. And it's going to go in, into it like this, into slots, and of course doing it single-handedly. And it's going to be like this. I was going to just bend these things here, but then I decided, well, instead of bending them, which is kind of irreversible, or maybe reversible a couple times before they fall off, instead of it I decided to just stick a wire through the holes. It's reversible and maybe it's even better. Of course these things are going to stick from the front of the box, but who cares? So that's it, and it stays in place. I can press it. Isn't it just absolutely amazing? Now let's give it some batteries. Up to 109% more power compared to what? I put the batteries in and connected this test speaker with a capacitor. And the speaker is completely falling apart, but just for the test. And of course higher impedance speakers are better for this one, but just for test. And of course the amplifier is an absolute distortion master 3000, a nightmare of every audio file. But it's optimized for a high gain with minimum number of components, minimum number of transistors and for the ability to completely shut down with virtually no current draw. Good enough for speech but definitely not hi-fi. And of course the polarity of the cable doesn't matter. If you flip it, it still works. There is nothing polarized on this side. 